how inked up here today is one uh, star presenting in front of your mother. But the great thing about this presentation and what she was talking about in terms of technology is a key thing that oftentimes my students that are teacher candidates and oftentimes students in other professions tend to forget is something that technology cannot and should not remove, which is mentoring. Now, I recognize that you're in college and it's probably a good thing that your parents aren't here because many of you probably wouldn't have your text messaging phones out and probably wouldn't have sunglasses on. You're probably sitting up and looking a whole lot more alert. Um, but one of the things that we're seeing now is with the emergence of technology is a absence of dependence upon those leaders and those elders that provide a lot of the wisdom that technology cannot capitalize on. See, the one thing that I have to remember, the one thing that I want to share with you, that I also share with my students, is that the wisdom that you have, those life experience, that common sense experience that you have and you need that gets you through the day, that when it's raining outside, you need an umbrella. I don't need technology to tell me that. I need common sense to tell me that. Those little life lessons to tell you who to date, who not to date, who you probably still are dating. Those little things oftentimes come from the great wisdom of your elders. And so one of the things that you need to remember is that those great and wonderful stories oftentimes pass through women in your communities. Those great, wonderful storytellers that give you those old wives tales of everything that lives in this gold. Yes, my grandmother, Lois, Mary of Gentry, proud from Detroit, Michigan, told me some great things that didn't make sense to me when I was five, certainly didn't want to make sense when I was 15, but certainly in my adult years are starting to make some sense. She had some sense. So one of the things that I want to talk to you about in my portion is just to remember to reach out and to look at those great individuals in your life, those women, those great storytellers that make history in your life. They may not break the history books that you study and that you will get a degree in. They may not be on the front of your shirt or the back pocket of your pants like Puffy or Sean John and Jay-Z would like you to. They may not even be on BET or MTV or VH1 or CNN or hopefully not on Flavor of Love. But oftentimes, it's those women in your life that will oftentimes give you the most solid, grounded information and advice that will get you to your goals and that will get you to your success. So even though my mother and her great infinite wisdom uh, pulled me from the back to the stage to now to this microphone uh, to help, I guess, buffer time in her presentation, we'll talk about that when she buys me lunch, um, but it's also because of the fact that it is very rare that you see a mother-daughter combination. Now, you might see that at church. You used to see that when maybe you were five or 10, when, on a Saturday when you walk down the street and say, oh, we'll get them together, having that great mother-daughter family time together. But we're learning now that even the technology and even in this great, I have to have my iPod, I have to have my cell phone. Some of you would not be here right now. Your cell phone would distract you right now. You're absolutely sure that somebody's calling you right now. President Bush is calling you right now and your cell phone's not right here because you can it. Some of you have made the class late, don't raise your hand. You're just gonna be taped, don't raise your hand. But some of you are late to class, have gone back across town because you didn't have your iPod, your cell phone. You left something, you made that you turn. I, I, I might not have my textbook, but I gotta have my, I gotta have my cell phone because I know for a fact that if, if I don't have my cell phone, she's probably calling me right now and telling me to hurt me off the stage. And that's okay because I'm getting ready to sit down anyway. But I know that oftentimes the things that we do forget are the things that we hold tried and true. You need to leave home with your mother's words. Maybe not in front of your head, but they still need to be in your head. You need to remember those great messages and ideas and expectations that they have for you, even being here at Tennessee State University that even though they may not be the top 10 people or top 8 people on your MySpace page, they better always be number one in your personal page because they're the ones that will always have your back. And if you think about 2007, you don't see that mother and daughter bond. And unfortunately, as time progresses, we are finding out that even the father-son bond in all races is becoming non-existent. So I ask you and I challenge you today to make a resolution that if you haven't called your mom today to say thank you for getting me here, thank you for whatever that you 
told me that I haven't clicked into yet, think of it. Because we're talking about building history here and keeping intact the heritage that technology should not take over. And that's keeping true to the grounded roots of building history. And that history comes from acknowledging the wisdom that your, <clears throat> that your instructors possess, that your parents possess. Because we don't have those good big mamas anymore that cook us dinner on Sunday. I know, because uh, she's not been over there. Uh, but we don't have that anymore. We don't have those rich traditions anymore. And Thanksgiving and Christmas and those sacred holidays should not just be a, a calendar year event. We, you, have to create those moments. And I challenge you not to let technology take that away from you. Hold steadfast to your education, but hold steadfast to the educators in your life, whether they have degrees or whether they just have a degree as Big Mama or the know-it-all in your family. Give them honor, give them respect, and make sure that in terms of building history and staying true to your legacy that you will leave behind, that their voices are not replaced by the iPod musics. And you have 10,000 of them, I know, trust me, I have I'm on my 5,000 track right now. But I know that you have them out there, but please stay true to those. Thank you.